What it do players and trainers, it is your boy the Blazing Squid back with another power ranking for the LDL's offseason week one. But not as always, I am never alone. I am joined by Hi guys, how's things? Professor Wire right here. Week one, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, you know what's really cool? I actually I was in one of the servers and they said, you know, they feel like analysts should never be coaches, and I totally agree. Like this season, not being a coach. And just being able to analyze the other coaches really takes off a lot of biasm and other stuff that might, I don't know. You just get to see things in a different perspective. But without further yeah. ado, uh, coaches and players and trainers of all sorts, uh, I'm just going to go quickly over what week one matchups we had. And we have the Las Vegas Ladias versus the Rome Empoleons. We have the Birmingham Aerons versus the Birmingham Jolts. We have the Mesa City Machamps versus the Utah Valley Talon Flames. We have the Iowa Cup Chews versus the Detroit Sogaleos. We have the Outback Kamalas versus the Philadelphia Phantoms. We have the Tasmanian Toxic Croaks versus the Tempe Trevenants. We have the Frisky Feeny versus the Moon Valley Mewtwo's, the Good Goodyear Gudras versus the Albany Obama Snows, and the Tempe Trevenants. Nope, that's week two. All right, we're good. That's all the the battles for this week, and uh, unfortunately, we're gonna jump off from the bottom as and always. And at the bottom, I have ranked the Mesa City Machamps. What were your thoughts on this game? Uh, it was Bat Kyle versus uh, Jordan, and I thought to start off, jo uh, but Kyle started actually quite well. He started the game quite well, setting up hazards. He looked like he had a response to, um, I can't remember, it was his Klefki in, and he was doing quite well. He was setting up his game with hazards, and he had knocked out Jordan's Katana with HP Fire. Um, Kyle was up 6 to 4 and it was looking good. I'm pretty sure it was 64 or 65. And then, out of nowhere, um, Jordan comes in with the belly drum, Azu, and Kyle had no response to it. And I thought, well, if you've got to have some kind of response to a belly drum, Azu, but him not, I don't think he fully prepared for it because he, he did have other things to prefer, prepare for, like Katana, which is a big deal. Um, but Katana plus Azumarill, it was one or the other that was going to beat him, and it was Azumarill that Jordan chose, and I think Kyle really didn't have much to stop it when it got a plus six up, and that's, it's very unfortunate for him. Agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, uh, mentioned, as, as you mentioned, I thought the Nihiligo was, um, it was a great counter to Klefki overall, um, that was a good check that he had. I have very questionable doubts about his lead with Shuckle. I, I kind of looked at the like the teams and I was like, I wasn't sure if Shuckle was actually a good bring in general against Jordan. Like it did get off Stealth Rocks and it got off Sticky Webs, but like not that far into the match, Jordan's able to like just rapid spin him away. And then Z Power Gem. Um, I really expect the Thunderbolt on Starmie just to like probably even get like I think probably a Thunderball would have taken out the Azu but I I don't know he didn't bring it so that was like a little bit of misprep there um and yeah just he was not prepared for the belly drum Azumarill and that's like I think you should always like unless you know Azumarill is banded you always have a belly drum check always without a doubt but that's my piece of advice. Um, yeah, or maybe even not, instead of a Z power gem, Z psychic for stab probably could have done it. But man, I just saw. But like, yeah, the I think I love the click key counter for Nihiligo. Other than that, it was that I saw and the hidden power fire on Kartana. I thought that was phenomenal prep. But outside of that, it's just. Man, I really didn't see anything else. Nah. 
let down weak, but it's only week one, so we can learn from it. Yeah, exactly. But I do think he actually trades out Shuckle week after week one. So probably he made a better transaction. I would have to look into that. But I'm pretty sure he's going to make the changes that he needs to bounce back. And I'm waiting for it back, Kyle. We've, I think I've heard a lot of great stuff about you. So I'm expecting it. I'm expecting how he thinks. But with that said, let's jump on to spot number 15, the Philadelphia Phantoms. Man, Lorik C here. Lorik C versus Jesse. Oh, this is Apollo. This is Apollo? Why put Apollo? Wait, what? No, this is Apollo. Or is it Lorxy? No, Lorxy's cool week two. I don't know why. I was like, what? Okay, so yeah. Uh, so we have Jake here. Jake and the Philadelphia Phantoms. We mentioned this, I think, when we were doing the post analysis. I said his top six mods are his best mods. Week one, he brings his top six mods. I was just like, are you serious? Like, all Jesse had to do was prep for these exact six, and he had the W in the bag. But what were your thoughts in the game? Uh, yeah, I thought one play I really did like from Lord Chi was um, when Thunderous got to plus two with Nasty Paw. Um, I thought he, with the Sylveon, he clicked Protect. Uh, I don't know if he predicted the Z move or just wanted to scout. I think the Protect was very good because it lost um, Jetman so much momentum. As he like, he didn't have a really good way to break through Sylvia on with Thunderous. Then his best way was with through the Z move, which went into the protect. Um, so I like that play, and I like the choice bandit on Manitan because it kind of just broke through two or three other things on Jetman's team. But I don't think he was really prepared for the substitute baton pass Pukumuku, and he had no real good way to break through P Pukumuku. But that's. I don't really know if I can say much more about him. I don't think he played too badly, but it was just... He... he how can you prep for a sub baton pass Pukumuku? I, I don't know if he expected it, but... Yeah, I like some of the plays Lord she made, and... It was a close game, so... Um, yeah. Not, not too close, but... It was, yeah, mediocre. It was, I think I have him ranked so low because this is a game he shouldn't have lost, in my opinion. This is a game he should have not lost. Um, he brought his best six, and for his best six to not kind of pull through for me was a big yikes. Uh, I really like the Scarf Lando. Scarf Lando was amazing, um, but kind of a misprep there in the sense that well it depends it all depends on how you view this but at, at turn two he must have known that his opponent he already revealed the scarf so i you gotta know you're most likely or than not your opponent will switch out unless they're a really hyped to your player like shane did to me once and he actually read and pulled that he pulled he knew i was gonna not double but point of the story is the thunderous switching was so obvious for I thought he could have prevented the whole setup that Jesse did and he actually did not make that read and he gave thunders a free um I think he'd get a free agility first before he got the nasty plot just because um I feel like the Kyron set too that could have been a different item I I'm not even sure if we saw its item throughout the game um but I think if it had a third, I don't know. I think he, he needed to roost sooner than later because him roosting when he did and not getting, breaking the baton path, not breaking the sub when he could have and getting Lycanroc in for free behind his sub really cost him the match. Uh, but other than that, it did well. It did well. A bulky Sylveon saved him from getting a potential swept from Thunderous, and I love the banded Darmanitan. I'm pretty sure it was banded. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was banded. Yeah, but... If it did, like, so much to Infernape. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, it was just the fact that he... This is a game he should have not lost. Like, without, like... I was watching the battle, and I was like, there's no way he can lose this. There's no way he can lose this. And surely, but not, he lost. And I was like, are you kidding me? But hey, Jet Jetman had amazing prep, and we'll get into that when we do. 
So jumping on to spot number 14, we have the Las Vegas Larias. And I'm pretty sure that's Arbelardo's team. Um, so for him, oof, this is not a good one. No. <laughs> um, I only have three comments. First of all, why do you set up hazards in front of a spinner? Is my number one question. Why do you set up hazards in front of a tentacle? If tentacle can easily just spin them away. <laughs> that was like my biggest, biggest pet peeve in that match. Um, I really did like the Swords Dance Bulu. Swords Dance Bulu saved him in the match. If not, he would have got swept by Cresselia. And you know how nasty Cresselia can be. You had it last season. <laughs> I did. It's very yeah. annoying. And then I put PS the games. I don't even know what PS meant the game meant. I don't know what time what time did I write this? 1.20 a.m. No wonder I wrote PS the games. I don't know what PS now even means. But yeah, that's all I had. What were your thoughts? Um, let's see what I wrote here. I wrote um yeah, the first few turns of Abelardo setting up hazards were pretty much useless because Aaron um rapid spin them away like instantly. I didn't like the T Tentacle was in, and then Abelardo switched in his, into his Blacephalon oh. and let his Blacephalon go down. Yeah. I was like, Blacephalon can win you this game. Why do you let it go down like that? That's another thing I didn't understand. Um, the Magnazone being choice locked, I'm pretty sure it, it was choice locked by the way he played it. That, that was not too good for him because he lost so much momentum going for Thunderbolt and Aaron switches to Don Fan. Then Don Fan can uh, freely, I'm pretty sure it went for a gunk shot and got free damage on the Gyarados, which was... So he lost a lot of momentum in this match. Losing Blacephalon was very bad because late in the game, Shadow Ball could have just won that game if he had um, played his game right. But yeah, as you said, I, don't, I didn't really agree with the hazard at the start of the game. And I, I pretty much wrote down the same as what you said. You wrote out PS the game too. Oh no, no. no, I didn't write that. I didn't write that. When it comes back to me, I'll figure it out. But yeah, it was just man. But we did mention how how bulky this team was, and it's just I don't know. I don't know. I really think he could have taken a different route. Maybe probably made, played a bit more aggressive throughout the game. But we just we didn't see that and. We'll talk about um, Aaron's very, very good decision making when we get there. Yeah. But let's jump on to spot number 13 where we have, I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, this is Blaze here. Blaze yeah, versus Shane. I remember that they mentioned that it was a quick battle and it really was. It was 11 turns long. Yeah. I love the way this battle started off. At first, I was, I was, I was thinking, why did he have a defensive Sovali? When his opponent had a Landorus, but after when I was analyzing the two teams, I kind of realized Steel Sovali was his Mega Mawile check. So I was like, okay, that's good. That's really good. Except that turn one, you let it get dented, like heavily. Landorus, like almost O coded. I'm pretty sure it was a Scarf Landorus because actually I was bad. It depends on the spread, actually. But no, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. So basically, he did get the kill on Lando first turn, and then he got the free toxic on Uxi, which I thought was really, really nice. Um, I love the sand core. That was about it. Those three things: defensive Savali, you killed Lando, toxic on Uxi, you brought the sand team. But I think due to the fact that what Shane did that match, just the fact, I think if Sovali is your Mega Mawile check, you should never ever like let it just get dented. That's my opinion. And we kind of witnessed it in this match, the fact that he lost Sovali so early, um, like he, it, he couldn't do anything. He could not do anything this match. And it was, it was really, really, it was really bad to watch. I don't know, what were your thoughts? Yeah, that turn one aggravated me so much. Like, I understand you want to get rid of Landorus because Landorus is such a big threat. But 
Silver Alley Steel is your only thing that can take a hit from Mega Marwile. So, instead of letting, instead of trying to kill his Landras and letting your Silver Alley get weakened, you should you should switch out every time. Don't let your Silver Alley get dented. Don't let your defend your defense that you need get dented because Silver Alley doesn't have a recovery. So there's no way you can get that health back up so that you can at least try to take a hit from Mega Marwell. Mega Marwell killed Silvalli with an iron head. That's Silvalli's steel. <laughs> like that Ooh. other than that, there's nothing much he really could have done after that. I think as soon as that turn one decided the game. It was <sighs> Yeah. Can't say anything more. Yeah, I agree. after turn one it really just it really did decide the game and, and and i think it has to do a bit of the problem with no because yeah he had chestnut like he could have switched into chestnut that game it's just i i don't know all right but that's all we have for blaze i i really hope to see you bounce back man because you have a really nice team like seriously it's uh, it's a really good team it has the sand core just when you don't prep for like trick room it gets nasty it really does but without further ado let's jump on to spot number 12 number 12 we have here the birmingham jolts uh and their coach gj all right so for the birmingham jolts we have i love the heracross set swords dance was guts was so so scary for Arthur to face, um, so I love that. That was that was phenomenal. Uh, Scarf Gyarados was questionable, questionable in the sense that you had it kind of as a mega low pony check, and you click bounce. But regardless if you click bounce or not, it's still a free switch in for your opponent, especially Arthur. So <laughs> that was uh, I was I wasn't sure, and then the Skarmory uh, Skarmory lead was kind of an obvious lead, so he could have countered that. Arthur was able to make that read and actually even counter with Zero Aura, but just Arthur trying to make predictions and he just uh, it's just whatever I don't know. And then on top of all that, I think running a bulky Scizor was not a bad call, except for the fact that it was slower than Empoleon. And Arthur only invested four points into speed to outspeed it. So you could have sped crept that. I, I always recommend sometimes if you can over speed creep, like speed creeps, like the minimal, go for it. I've done it a few times and it's worked out in my favor. Um, it's it's an amazing thing you could do because eventually the scissor gets burned and then it's rendered useless. Um, I think a Needle King could have been a much much better lead option overall. Um, Arthur had questionable mons, or, uh, mons overall like like Nidoking King could have hit pretty well uh, his whole team um it was not a bad team it just got crippled too much and the three flinches at the end really saved the game for him like if not it would have been like a 4-0 or was it a 2-0 I think it would have been a, th a 3 or 4-0 but the flinches saved them and those are my thoughts what are your thoughts um I'm that Skarmory lead, Skarmory, Skarmory was useless in the end because it was there, it set up a few hazards, but a few turns later they get defogged away by Empoleon, which, why, <laughs> the Skarmory let it go down and then you know he's got hazard removal in the back, so I didn't see but the point in that. I like that he had, that DJ had Umbreon with Toxic Protect to stop the bulk up Sarah Aura, I thought that was quite good um the hair across as you said was really good and i liked how he had defensive scissor it was a good good switch into mega low punny apart from like high jump kick but he was switching into mega low punny it wasn't taking too much damage but when scissor died to empoleon mega low punny became a massive problem for dj and as you said his best response to it was gyrados scarfed but scarf bounce you're better off going for Scarf, like, I, d I don't even know what else <laughs> Gyarados, Gyarados can really do to knock out Megalopony in one hit. I mean, Scarf Waterfall get flinches, 
but Megalopony was a massive problem to DJ and um, I think he could have prepped for it a little better but overall he didn't play badly he just had too many things that he couldn't deal with on Arthur's team agreed agreed but DJ is getting better so I'm really really happy to see that and I could see him bouncing back from this um, but yeah I, I think I have to just chit chat with you I know it's probably a Moxie Gyarados, but I don't know if that was really, really the best lead. Without further ado, let's jump on to spot number 11, where we have the Moon Valley Mewtwo's. Uh, what do you have written down for this? Okay, so Brandon versus Davin. Um, this was uh, quite a... It was quite a decent game. It was, it was quite good. Um, I thought Brandon... I liked how he used his Mega Scizor to U-turn around, get in Electivire against uh, Tapu Fini. His... Brandon got a lot of momentum in this game. He brought uh, with Mega Scizor, U turning around. Uh, he brought a really good Toxapex set to deal with the Mega Kangaskhan. And it kind of just switched. It just sat there in front of Mega Kangaskhan, and Mega Kangaskhan could hardly break through it. But oh, that was a happiness. Um, I, you could tell that there was a there was a mess gem with a the happiness there. Oh, well, I, I didn't really pay attention there, but. Um, I, I, I just liked how Brandon Newton around. I loved the po weakness policy Mamoswine. I yeah. really liked that. Um, but it was a really close game, and I think it could have gone either way. So, but I, Brandon, you did well. I think I don't know what to improve on. Maybe, oof. Uh, I don't know. You talk. I'll think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the only thing he could have improved on. Um, Two things I actually took note of was the lack of hazard removal. Like most of our opponents this week won because they had hazard removal, but he lacked it this week in the sense that his opponent got up the sticky webs and he cannot get rid of them. So a lot of his mons just got slowed down because of that. And I think a even though Scizor had the U-turn, Bug Bite would have been better. Bug Bite would have been better because I think with the Technician boosted, it would have got it to kill. I forgot on what Mon. I know there was a Mon that barely lived because he went for U-Turn. But if he had Bug Bite, he could have got the kill. And like Swords Dance would have done a tremendous amount of, on, on Davin's team. But as you mentioned, the weak, poli uh, weak policy Mamoswine was phenomenal. Toxapex was such a big threat this week. I love seeing the way that thing was walling. I love the double he pulled at the end um, to bait in the Tapu Fini and he got in his Electivire. I thought that was amazing. But Electivire just came up slightly short on the KO on, on the Finny. And then the Baneful Bucker Toxapex really was the MVP for me this game. Even though I love Crypto, the Zydog, so much, I think Toxapex really... Really kept them in for so long. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Hundred percent for that. <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, really. It, I thought Whimsicott was gonna have defog, and it didn't. So that was actually a huge, huge bummer. Cause had he got rid of the the webs, he could have done a lot, a lot better this matchup. Yeah, because I think Electivire was slower than Finny, and that kind of that kind of cost him. Um, but with, without further ado, we we'll jump on spot number 10 where we have the Tasmanian Toxicroaks. Uh, oof, this is a really, really good game. This is actually a, one of the runner-ups for the Battle of the Week this week. Uh, so we have Wapple, Waffles and Max Rapture. Right off the bat, man, Max Rapture had the back foot, man. He had the back foot, uh, in this game. Waffle was playing really, really good, but man, Max... Max went down fighting. Max went down fighting. Uh, I love the fact that he brought spikes on Gren this week. Uh, spikes were really, really useful. Um, slowly dwindling down his opponent's team. Um, I also love the fact he brought unaware Clefable this week. Meaning Manaphy cannot set up a tail glow and sweep. So that's awesome. Or like Mew cannot set up. So I feel like that was really, really nice. Um... Some questionable plays were when he had Dragalgy in, he actually clicked Draco 
while his opponent still had Heatran and like Heatran like really really walls your two stabs so that was that was questionable for me I thought Z Mimikyu was awesome that I, I love seeing the animation um, and on top of that it had enough speed to outspeed a I think it might be in like I don't know if it was a bulky mana fee or stuff like that but regardless of the fact that this was not Max's best game he still went down losing 1-0 I thought that was amazing that that shows how much skill level that Max has and he showed this match I'm a little mad he did not upload week one maybe because if he lost and but he up really he uploaded week two so I'm, I'm gonna I'm really gonna catch that and what were your thoughts yeah this was my personal favorite game I really liked this game uh, as you said Max was on the back foot the whole game he had to try and pull it back and he pulled it back really well he had to deal with that choice scarf Staraptor, which was really detrimental to his team and he, he Waffles had so many answers for whatever Max wanted to throw at him, like Sugarberry Heatran, he had Colberberry Mew, but Max had to try and deal with that, and he did pull it back to a 1-0. I like how he used the Z-move Mimikyu to kill Staraptor, and he, he was so close at the end, but couldn't kill Manaphy with the play rough, which was... Uh, I know he was never going to kill anyway, but maybe Ultra Crit. Maybe he's got a hope for an Ultra Crit, but... I really like how he pulled back the game, and he's definitely gonna be a very tough person to beat this season. With the way he, if he plays just a tiny bit better than he did. Yeah, so, agreed, agreed. Yeah. And as you mentioned, like, yeah, it shows the high high level of IQ that Max has. That right off the bat, he knew Star Raptor was scarfed, and like it just shows you, like right off the bat, he I guess. For the most part, he kind of knew what his opponents might bring as item-wise, and he tried to play around it the best that he can, and he really did. He really did to to bring it down to what it was at the end. But without further ado, let's jump to the Detroit Sogaleos and their coach, Zeminon. So we had Zeminon versus Carlos this week. Why don't you start us off? Um... I thought Zeminon was, at, like Max, I thought he was on the back foot all game, like for most of the game anyway, trying to trying to catch up. And he had so many, Carlos had so many uh, big threats to Zeminon. He had to try and pull back the game. And I thought Carlos had the better matchup in this, so that meant Zeminon had a tougher game. I also, I'm pretty sure it was Hydreigon used a U-turn on the Swampert. And Zeminon switched to Hoopa Unbound, and then Hoopa Unbound just died right there. Um, Hoopa Unbound is always a big threat, even if Alan got a big good matchup. So it was bad to see that go down like that. I didn't really write too much for this game, but that's really all I wrote. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think Swamper was a boss. It really, I think it got like three kills or something like that. It did really, really good this matchup. I didn't expect it to do so well. Um, I think the AV Toxic Rook was awesome. He mentioned that that was like a VGC um, tech. I don't know much about VGC, but that was really, really cool to watch. And actually came in very, very useful against the Tapu Coco. Um, honestly speaking, I think... This match was just Swamper and Toxic uh, Toxic Croak. Everything else really much just kind of got sacked or just got killed in a, like two turns or something like that, which really really suck. Um, Zeminon, <laughs> he made like all the bad all the bad misreads. Like the first time he he swapped in Gliscor expecting a U turn and Carlos went for Draco, and then second time that the matchup came up again. Instead of uh, which I consider would have been the better play was go back into Gliscor, sack that so that way you have a healthy Hoopa. But instead, he switched to Hoopa on the U turn, as you mentioned, and that really just cost him. Like, and now he has a crippled Gliscor and a dead Hoopa on two bad misplays or misreads overall. Um, another huge misplay was the Rotom Heat, he kept it in against uh, Mega Aerodactyl, and I was like. 
Mariga Aerodactyl is a rock type. Like, what are you doing? Like, I know you just swapped it in on, on the Ice Fang, but you have to take the Stealth Rock damage. You take the Ice Fang. I think it revealed the leftovers. So, like, you just kind of revealed you're not Scarf. And you revealed you're not the Charty Berry, if I'm not mistaken. That's the Rock Weakening Berry. And that's an easy kill for Aerodactyl. And so be it. Aerodactyl just goes down. When he actually could even bait it and switched in Swamper to easily eat that up. And keep his uh, Rotom around for the late game. But that's fine. Uh, I, um, I think AV, Toxicroak, and Swamper really, really kept him in this game. To only lose 1-0... So it was closer than it should have, in my opinion. But because of those two mons, he really was able to keep it alive. And I, I really liked the way that he played, regardless of losing Rotom and Hoopa. So it was basically a game of four mons versus six. And he was able to lose 1-0 is a win in my book. It really is a win in my book. But yeah, overall, different-wise, just... Don't make so risky reads, man. Like I like I mentioned, like I when you were in the same situation with uh Hydreigon and 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 Swamper and you swapped out, just next time probably go into the same on twice. I know you got you wanna make the read, but it's it's not worth it at times. It's not. But without further ado, we'll jump onto spot number eight where we have the Iowa Cup choose. So we can just jump into his match. Um for Carlos, I would have to say this is, he played a good game, but it wasn't his best game. Um, he had he had a much better game because of his opponent's uh, bad reads. Like, the, the free U-turn on Hoopa was just super, super, an easy kill, uh, an easy kill. Uh, Carlos had a more passive-aggressive approach this week. Uh, I think that's usually his play style. Uh, um, a little bit more aggressive would have been better in my opinion. Like, Gligar wasn't doing much for him this game. Except walling. But it really didn't have to wall anything. Uh, seeing that Hoopa kind of went down. I think, I don't know. Like, it's it can't do much against Swampert. And it, it really wasn't really doing much there. I think he burned the Z Gengar way too early. And the fact that you burned it too early made it the 1-0 that it shouldn't have been. That was my uh, thoughts because um, you wasted it on the Swamper when you easily could have gone for the Energy Ball. And I know he had something to counter it, but I'm pretty sure you could have played around it. Uh, so Energy Ball was the play there. And then late game Z Gengar. But other than that, the... The Hydreigon was awesome. It actually dented Zemanon's team too much for him to come back for the W. So I do applaud you on that. And great use of the Scarf, man. I know Hydreigon Scarf is a very, very common set, but you got her to work. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I pretty much, <laughs> most of my notes here are about Hydreigon. I thought um, Carlos had the better matchup um, upon team preview. Uh, Gengar was a very big uh, problem to Zemanan, it was a good bring on uh, Carlos, and Hydreigon was prop the biggest thing in this match. The one he, I think he had one moment where he, where he lost momentum, he went for Draco Meteor against the Glisco, and the Glisco lived on like 1 HP, 1 or 2 HP, and I was like, oh, but that lost him a bit of momentum, he, had to tr he, he recovered from that, which was good. Um, I wasn't. I've never really seen Carlos play before, so I'm not sure how he plays. I'm not sure if this is his best, but you said it isn't, so I'm going to expect a bit more from him. But overall, he played a, a good match, and I look forward to what he can do.
<laughs> you, you literally just said it all. All he had to do was click barely drum, and he won the game. Um, uh, as I said, he was on the back foot at the start of the game with his katana going down. Um, something else went down. I can't remember what it was. Um, oh my god, my brain's not working. This is the last battle I watched as well. Like, <laughs> like why can't I remember? But yeah, he was on the back foot. All he had to do was get in Azumarill at the right time with Klefki weakened, click barely drum, sweep. There wasn't really much to this game. Um, I think Jordan played it the start of his game. I don't like how he risked his. He played so risky with his katana. Um, that was a bit like. If you bring it down a Klefki, uh, Smart Strike is n not going to kill a Klefki from that range. It's, it was about 60%. Smart Strike isn't going to kill a Klefki from that range because Klefki is normally bulky. I don't know why you play so so um, aggressive with that because he, you've got to have coverage for Katana on nearly everything. HP Fire, something like that. So I didn't like how risky he played with that, but otherwise, the Barely Drum who just won and it did him did him the job so nothing nothing we can really say about that game No, that's it.
Yeah, we said in the draft, uh, post draft breakdown, power rankings, how much I hate this team. But I've got to say, I love how I love how Aaron played his played this game. He, I believe, he had a set game plan going into this. He stuck to that game plan. He went through. He had answers for everything. He had answers for Cresel, uh, for Zygarde in Cresselia. He had answers for Magnazone in Donphan. He, killing Blacephalon really early just can just put him on the front foot. Also, he got his hazards up and rapid rapid blah, 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 rapid spin away. Avalado's hazards, which was really good for him. I like. I just really love how Aaron played this match, and he uh, he made a lot of good predictions with the Don fan, and he got rid of that Mega Gyarados, which was da Dragon Dancing on his face, and it's just Aaron's team is gonna be so hard to break down. Like you could see today. Yeah. To, why do I keep saying today? The battles didn't happen today. <laughs> you could see with this battle that. Avalado was struggling to break down his team because Aaron pre pre prepared so well with answers for everything. Uh, Cresselia is just an answer for everything. Um, I know he predicted the the Z move on the Zygarde to moonlight up and render that Z move useless. So overall, Aaron he could go on to win many games this season if opponents do not prepare for that. What do we not prepare for that bulk? Because he sh he's shown it in that battle. That it's very hard to break down, and Aaron knows how to play. He can come into a match and win it. And uh, yeah, that's all I can say. Okay, so the first note I put was, um, I like how Davin did prepare with the heal bell to stop Toxapex, just toxic uh, stalling everything on his team. I like, um, I like the sticky web, bringing the sticky webs to set up because they were a very big problem for Brandon. I really like Davin's prep this game with the sticky web and as the heal bell, as I said, he just prepared really well. We're seeing people prepare very well, um, in this week one. Also, he was five. He was losing five to three, and I love how he brought in Zygarde, and as you said, Zygarde is a monster, and he just he pulled that game back to 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 level. So it was three three, uh, because Brandon might have been in a comfortable position when he was winning five to three, but Darren used his Zygarde well, pulled the game back, and get himself the momentum with with two three kills. And then he then he just saw the game out and uh, he played it so carefully so that he did not mess up and he did come out with the clutch 1-0 win. Um, I'm thinking points for improvement, maybe... Ooh. Mm. Yeah, yeah, double check your mons. When you're on your team building, when you're when you're chaining them, look through your mons. Are they all good? Do they look good on showdown? Everything fine? Then, gen. It's simple, but otherwise, very good match. And Davin's gonna look like a real threat with this team. Mega Kangaskhan, Saigon. Oh my. <laughs>
Who knows? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Guys, just pretend you didn't see it. Pretend, pretend you didn't see it. Yeah, this is waffles. This is waffles. Oh. Oh, Waffles, <laughs> I love your name, I love how you battle this battle, honestly, I, I like, I love the Mew set, I love the Staraptor, the Scarf Staraptor was a really good bring, he got so much momentum with U-Turn, every time he had to bring in Jirachi and you just U-Turn out, go into something like Sneasel, put pressure on, and you get momentum that way, uh, he had... <laughs> Max, Max um, had a calm mind Jirachi, which started setting up, but Waffles was ready with it. He had Dragon Tail Mew, which was which just blew my mind. How, 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 I was, he clicked it the turn that Jirachi clicked Calm Mind as well, which was great. Mew put Greninja on a timer, which really wore Greninja down during the game. Uh, Greninja got really low due to Toxic. Also, I. He, Waffles keeps getting momentum. Sneasel got a few kills. Um, and once he got get rid of Jirachi, Staraptor's biggest answer just died there because you could see Max was switching in Jirachi every time to that Staraptor. And when Sneasel killed it, Staraptor was very free to just click Brave Bird apart from the Mimikyu at the end. But he made Max play very safe, not make any predictions. He basically shoved Max into a corner and said, this is my game, I'm winning this game. And um, I really like how we played the game overall. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All that time. Oh my god. I muted down my. Oh shoot. Okay. What? I had. Some... I muted my mic. All this oh, time. No. <laughs> oh, um. No. Okay. Wherever, whenever I find that, guys, I will just. I don't know. Whatever. We're just gonna continue because I will quickly recap over. I think it was just probably from five and above but whatever that's that's nothing no big deal um jack went over most of it but yeah um week three the outback kamalas now i'm on week three spot number three outback kamalas and their coach Everything's going wrong for you today yeah i i think <laughs> I, i'm gonna go take a nap after this all right we have the outback kamalas and their coach gemman 99 uh gemman 99 some interesting sets this week. Some interesting sets, but Pukamuku very, very, very clutch this week. Uh, in the sense that it's it did what Pukamuku does, and it's a wall. 
and it was able to get those baton passing substitutes, which actually were super, super clutch. Uh, a cell rock with the Endeavor and an assault. I said a cell rock. It's Lycan rock with the Endeavor and the cell rock was really, really um, smart. It was pure genius in my opinion. I wish he would have played a little bit more aggressive with a Thunderous. Sylveon with Protect is a common set. So I wish he would have got to plus four. Had he got to plus four, we probably would have seen the sweep this week. Um, I was, it was interesting, but Rocky Helmet and Friend Ape was actually a good bring. Like it, it got the extra chip damage he needed uh, to hurt the Darmanitang. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure how viable Gramble was this week, in the sense that Gramble was slower than everything on his team. Uh, his opponent's team so it really couldn't outspeed or hit anything hard and I don't think Gramble is one of those mons that can really actually take too many hits but I could be wrong but this is a game I thought Jetman99 was going to lose this week and he actually brought it back so congrats to him on that what are your thoughts? You've written down the same as me. Oh. I'm gonna say Pukumuku was a, a very good set. Uh, I didn't expect it. The Endeavor like and Rock I really liked, but I ultimately liked how Jetman set up his end game really well. He focused on how he needed to win, um, just with Crocodile. Get in that Crocodile with everything weakened, and you can just knock off Mo Moxie Sweep. So I really like how he set that up. I thought. I thought just it was a really good game overall and Jetman did pull it out in the end I didn't like how he played the thunder as you said um, he's probably listening to this and he's going to message us on discord afterwards ah, nah, nah, I didn't mean to uh, stuff I don't know he's gonna be salty with what we're saying um, uh, love you um, but basically yeah he set up his end game some really cool sets and that's all I can really say uh, yeah Agreed. Uh, spot number two, the Goodyear Gudras. I probably only wrote like... Alright, look, I'm going to tell you verbatim what I wrote. Shane versus Blaze. Trick Room, Mega Mawal, Clean, 6 kills. <laughs> Week 1. <laughs> the reason this guy is the champ. <laughs> That's all I wrote. I wrote a tiny bit more. I put Shane versus Blaze, Landorus Week and Silvali. Uxie gets up rocks, Uxie trick room, Mega Marwell sleep, sleep, sleep. <laughs> yeah, like two sentences. The difference was two sentences. <laughs> but yeah, th that was basically it, man. Like Shane came out and like he, he should like, he, this man was like, look, I got somewhere to be. I got a wedding. I'm out. <laughs> like I need to beat you in 10 turns or less. Blaze was like, dude, don't worry. And legit, that's what happened. It was 11 turns, but still like. Man, I think the fact that it had Sucker Punch. Like, he had Stealth Rocks up, right? So Lazo comes in. If it's Focus Sash, it's already broken. Sucker Punch, range, dies. Um, he did. His opponent did not have a Chopple Berry, which I thought would have been the better bring for Blaze um, to have this week for the Mega Mawile. It didn't have it. It died. Uh, Tyranitar died. It, it got off the Earthquake, but it's not Stab. It's super effective, not Stab. Dies. Like... Dude, what did Mawa not do this game? I don't know, but yeah, we it's an off season. We're trying Mega Mawa, and I'm pretty sure it's never gonna be allowed in the real season. Now, six kills in week one, wow! But Shane knew how to win this game. He knew Trick Room Mega Mawa was gonna win this game. He set it up in the first few turns. He was like, okay, I'm going for this. Uh, you just gotta respect that. You just gotta be like, well done, GG. <laughs> Yep. Nothing much more. Alright, so jumping into spot number one, the Birmingham Aerons. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, okay. So what did I write here? Uh, one play I really liked was Hair Across was at plus two with the guts up. So uh, Arthur went into Kafagugus and uh, it died to the knockoff, but it got the mummy off. So Heracross was essentially burnt because it didn't have guts anymore. I really liked that play. Zebra Aura killing Skarmory was kind of big. I like the Empoleon, the speed creeping of Sizzle. And then Meg Mega Lopunny is just a big threat. It comes in and cleans. Um, I thought 
both players in this match played played relatively well, but Arthur played this game how he had to. He he set it up for Megalopony to just uh, to just win the game, and <sighs> nothing I can really say. He's got such a strong team. It was hard for DJ to stop it, and he got away the hazards that needed to be get, gotten rid of. Uh, he stopped the hair across. He stopped anything DJ threw at him, and that's a one thing a, a player like him, like he, a player like him does. You stop anything that's thrown at you that's gonna potentially lose you the game. He did it so well, and I think he deserves to be number one on the list. Yeah, I, man, I think it's crazy as like that's why I love when players can actually have the the opportunity to upload. I hope one day. Most of these players in LDLs have the opportunity to kind of just give their thought process and upload. But as you can see here, Arthur mentions that he brings a Calm Mind, Ladias with Recover, Dragon Pulse, and Hidden Power of Fire. And I was like, what? No Stab Psychic? Or like, why Dragon Pulse? And actually, if you look at his opponent's team, his opponent has no Fairy types. So Arthur capitalizes on the fact he has no Fairy types. I have, I'm, can. If I set up to plus four, as he did, I can Dragon Pulse anything. And then on top of that, his only real check is Scizor. I got Heaven and Power Fire. So I think that's very, very high IQ plays by Arthur. I love the Zero Aura set. I think he could have played a bit more aggressive. But me and Arthur just have different play styles. Because had he gone for bulk up sooner, um, seeing that his opponent was not switching out Skarmory. His opponent legit kept Skarmory in against a Zero Aura. Kind of, you could have easily got him that bulk, uh, bulk up sooner. And they got up another bulk up against the Umpreon and put in a lot of, a lot of pressure. But that's cool. It's fine. I think the defog of the rocks and spikes as soon as possible was a beautiful play. The Kofag, as you mentioned, awesome. It stopped a plus, potentially what, uh, that's considered plus three kind of ish in a way. Because of Guts plus a plus two. Um, Heracross. And it's crazy how that automatically goes from plus three to a like a negative two mon because of the mummy ability, um, or actually just standard because it's plus two. Thing, thing yeah, um, mega low punny is mega low punny. It does what mega low punny does. <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> um, the speed creep on Empoleon was fantastic. Uh, as I was mentioning again, he said he only mentioned he only put four points. Four points is what you get as a remainder. Like, you put 252 in one something, 252 in something else, you have four extra points. He put it in speed, outspeeding a scissor. That's two birds with one stone in my book. And then, no wrong plays in my opinion. I think he made every single one of those plays were the right calls. And, man, that this guy is good for the... He's just that good. He's just that good. Um, <laughs> coaches are going to have a hard time with Arthur. I have a hard time with Arthur, but it's a fun time. It's a fun time if you guys really do put work into it, though. But, man, that is our power rankings for week one of LDL offseason. Uh, quick recap, because I know I, mu I muted. I just said Waffle's game was awesome. Davin's game was awesome because he has a Kryptonite um, side dog. That's about it. I think that was it. But game of the week, we're going to give it to... I know Jack is against oh, me on this. Oh, drum roll, drum roll. Drum roll. roll. <laughs> Jetman versus Lorixie in week one here. Um, so yeah, Jetman, claim your prize. Um, we're going to be doing this for every week. So hopefully everybody can get a little bit of the love we have going around from the LDL community and all the admins and... The, the whole council, as you may say. Um, but I had a lot of fun recording this. What about you, Jack? Oh, yeah, I love doing these. And I bet you guys didn't expect that battle of the week. What a shocker. I know. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but some really good games. Looking forward to week two. I'm going to be Oof. watching those uh, in sometime this week, whenever I uh, can be bothered. I'm going to be honest with you. But... Um, yeah, looking forward to it. There were some really good battles. My personal favorite was Waffles. Um, and um, 
yeah, that's all I can say. Thank you for having me on again, and I'll look forward to next week when we do this again. Yeah, I agree. Waffles game was really, really good too. Uh, it's just Jetman. I think the baton pass. Pukumuku is good. Okay, whatever. whatever I'm not, I'm, we're done talking. We're done talking. We'll <laughs> catch you guys next week. You guys are amazing. Stay blazing. Squid out.